So this is courtesy of The Guardian. And this is, let me see if I can get up here. Why is it doing that? It's not letting me. Why is it? Why has it got this mad little gap here? I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So anyway, this is courtesy of The Guardian. So do you remember um, maybe at the at the start of the pandemic, maybe 2019, 2020, there was that thing going on with that festival in Saudi Arabia that everyone was going to in dance music, especially in electronic music. People are really getting angry that their favorite artist was basically, you know, firstly playing out at, at a time when the pandemic was at its peak. So it was a kind of a quote unquote play grave sort of thing. It felt like they were, you know, they had no regard for anybody else's health and safety and they were just going out there to collect the bag and it felt inhumane and where's the humanity? Think of my grandma, blah, 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 blah. And everyone kicked up a fuss, they moaned, they bitched. Some artist got cold feet and decided to, you know, not take the money and decided to not go to the to the festival whilst other people just decided to kind of bury their head in the sand and go and hope everyone would forget about it, which they basically have forgot about it. But... I don't think anybody would have really thought this would be the case. This is close to the Guardian says, Vice Media secretly organized 20 million Saudi government festivals. So that festival everyone was ragging on about, getting upset about, was actually organized and designed and fronted, or not fronted, supported in the background by Vice Media, which makes sense. Again, these people in the Middle East, if you've ever worked in Harvey Nicks, you've worked in Selfridges, you work in these luxury department stores or department store brands or luxury brands, sorry, fashion stores, you would know these people don't mess about. They're very like cold and calculating the way they do business, but they also like to delegate, you know, in a weird way. Sometimes they'll delegate for you to get their shoes out of their bags. Sometimes they'll delegate in terms of like, hey, where's a cool place to go? Where would you recommend? You look cool. You look interesting. Where can I go somewhere to go meet some girls? Where can I go somewhere to go get a drink? You, you Honestly, when times I've been on the shop floor talking to some, especially Middle Eastern men, you want to get freaky have some good times they're usually pretty upfront in terms of they would want to kind of um acquiesce to your advice like what would you say would be the place to go so it always was weird to me to think that somehow there was somebody within the saudi government who was spending their time keeping abreast of who was hot who was not and organizing this whole event it just seemed a little bit too much they'd rather just be sitting down having people carry them on their backs while they're enjoying the flipping concert than slaving away organizing it because let's be for real organizing something like this isn't fun it's long it's laborious people are probably going to be dropping out their front center you're not gonna be able to get all the sponsorship you want because no one's going to put their brand next to it it's probably a ball lake so they had to have used a, a producer an operator who had basically worked within that space prior and had some experience had contacts that they could kind of lean on and to kind of pull out their you know out their black book in order to get the job done and of course what better person to go to than vice media Right? What better person to go to than Vice Media if you wanted to get that sort of thing done? So it's no surprise that this is a thing, but it's also surprising to see a, a publication that purports to be left leaning or liberal in some way, shape, or form essentially put their morals and ethics to one side in order to get the bag. Now, I don't have a problem with it personally myself because I think I've always said we're all full of shit. I'm full of shit. You're full of shit. We're all full of shit. This thing that separates the delusional from people that are quite normal or rational people is that you are full of shit and you know it but you still talk about things you still talk from some level of you know snobbery you still pretend like you recycle even though you just chucked your snickers by out the window but you know you're full of shit the people who are delusional are the ones who are not full of shit who are full of shit but don't know it like the people that you might meet like um vegans who are cokeheads it's like you're full of shit you can't be an ethical, you can't be a vegan and kind of bemoan and, you know, lecture people for eating meat or for supporting these sort of industries when you are essentially, you know, endorsing the um, the deaths of thousands of people to get your little gram to go out and shortage. You know what I mean? That, that is not the way forward. You can't be that much full of shit. You have to be, you have to be able to have some level of self-reflection or some level of acceptance of how much full of shit you are and then you're able to move on from life. So I think that's the, that's where the hypocrisy comes into it. But it's still fascinating to see because it says you have 20 million dollars which is about what 15 million pounds they got they got i guess it doesn't it doesn't mean they got that money maybe that was just the budget for the actual production of the whole entire festival but it's just funny just to see this relate because this could easily be resident advisor this could easily be any of these kind of platforms right who kind of purport to be um the voice of the everyday person um fighting for liberal arts fighting against these totalitarian governments and then here they are sponsoring providing for and basically working in conjunction with a government that they have no business working with especially when you think about the people that work in that kind of place i mean like most of these people who are maybe from the lgbtq plus community wouldn't be welcomed 
you know, in that kind of country, living a life so that they live in a very warm way. So to see their company endorsing these sort of things just makes you want to laugh at it. It really, really does. It says as follows. When social media influencers turned up at the Azimuth, Azimuth music festival in the middle of the Saudi Arabian desert, they were promised a festival of music uh, and gastronomic excess, all subsidized by an arm of the Saudi government. When attendees did not know, so what attendees did not know was that the Privacy Music Festival was secretly organized by youth media company Vice as part of the media company's ongoing push to make money in Middle East um, state despite the company's poor human rights record. Just three years after, Vice publicly announced that it was pausing all work in Saudi Arabia due to a fallout from the state-ordered murder of descendant, um, dissident sorry, Jamal Khashoggi. As if... Um, insiders at Vice told the Guardian the company was once again aggressively pursuing business opportunities in Saudi. So, in one point, they're speaking at one side of their mouth by saying that you know we've taken this death of Jamal Khashoggi seriously, the killing of the alleged killing of this journalist at the hands of the Saudi government, um, which obviously did happen. If you read, you know, again, don't want to get into it, but you, you know, it probably oh, obviously did happen. They're saying one thing, and the other side, they they are organizing a festival for you to go see fucking Amelia Lenz or whoever it was playing at the time. It says as follows, vice employees have for years raised concerns over the company's involvement in Saudi Arabia, says the quote, and we've been fobbed off with empty statements and pathetic excuses. Although the uh, Asmuth Music Festival received little publicity in the Western media when it took place at the start of the COVID pandemic, is believed to have been highly lucrative for vice. Staff at the company estimate a total budget was $20 million or $15 million. Um, the event promised to bring together a best of the East culture, Eastern culture. It took place amongst um, ancient carvings at the World Heritage Site of Al Ula on a historic trade route. With the best Western culture, it featured the performance of the dance music trio Chainsmokers. Okay, so it's a meeting of East and West alongside the trade route. Okay, I, I get it. I get the idea. The lineup was topped by French electronic music Jean-Michel Jarre, who appeared alongside rapper Tiny Temper. Tiny Temple was a headlining guest at a Saudi Arabian festival. That guy is an absolute wild eye, didn't it? <laughs> Tiny fucking temper. High end chefs from restaurants such as New York City chefs, uh, New York City and Michelin star restaurant Contra in London's Annabelle were flown in to cook for guests. British contemporary artist Lauren Baker joined the conceptual studio, Schuster and Mosley to provide specialist art displays. Oh. Despite this, efforts were taken to keep Vice's name off the event. Contractors who worked on the music festival organized through Vice Corrective Agency Virtue were asked to sign non disclosure agreements while Vice's name did not appear. Uh oh. Saudi Arabia is desperate to spend big in a habit in an effort to rebrand itself in the eyes of Western youth. I also like the fact that they're doing what the I like the fact that they're doing what every other Western country does, where they pretend to be progressive, they pretend to be welcoming. But the day-to-day -day life basically, you know, is nothing like what they purport it to be. Because some people say, oh, it's a hypocrisy. Why spend all that money? We could just change your human rights record or change the way that you um, interact or accept people that live an LGBTQ lifestyle. But they're like, why would I? Why would I do that if I can just get away with what you guys are doing? So they want to spend big to make them look as if they're progressive. But day-to-day -day living in Saudi Arabia isn't probably the easiest place to live if you are from the Western world. It says, yeah, the, co the company um, rode the new media startup wave. On the new, da, da, da. As a result, the money on offer in the Middle East um, has been tempting. And Vice last year opened a dedicated office in Saudi Arabia, capital Riyadh. There's a vice office in Riyadh. Oh, my God. It also has to deal with the promotional films for the country in conjunction with the Saudi Research and Marketing Group, a business with close ties to the Saudi state, which also has partnership with Independent Mate. Every business in Saudi Arabia has state has connection with the Saudi state. One employee claimed vice executives were actively aware of the potential reputational damage that would be caused if the Western audience became aware of the extent to which they were working with the Saudi state, saying it was astounding that despite the ongoing opposition from staff, vice still happy to take the money from the country that was literally responsible for state sanctioned murder of journalists. But the thing is, I think, is that if you are that if you have the courage of your convictions, you should just quit. But I would guess the amount of people that actually stayed, the amount of people that quit, it pales in comparison. I would bet, I bet it, I bet a lot of money. People don't back their beef. They talk a big game, but when it comes down to it, they don't do jack shit. It continues, it says, asked about concerns of the staff, 
um, asked about concerns from staff about its return to doing business in Saudi Arabia, a spokesman for Vice said, Vice Arabia was set up over four years ago as part of our global expansion, alongside many of our other media content business who have expanded into the region. Vice has always been about creativity and culture for youth in every corner of the world, and in Saudi region, two-thirds of the population under 35. Oh, come on. We've opened its commercial and creative office in Riyadh early this year, which reported and shared publicly. Our editorial voice hasn't always will report with complete autonomy and independence. Bruv, come on, you can't report independence in the Saudi state. You already saw what happened to Jamal Khashoggi, my G. MBS on play. But yeah, LOL, innit? The hypocrisy is LOL. 